What's up you guys? How you doing? So this topic was supposed to be for my live stream but I didn't do my live stream today and this topic has been weighing on my mind for a very long time so let's dive into it okay. I have so many things to say and it is about you know Nigerian women employing house helps and I noticed that whenever anybody comes online to come and talk about oh this is what my house help did or you know I'm letting go of this house help or this house help left my house many people like to make comments that it's either they are being very hypocritical or they are genuinely ignorant of some things and are making their comments based on sentiments okay so i've seen it in so many people's comment sections many people just have these assumptions that the madams are always the oppressors you know how nigerians think you know how human beings are basically you always see the employer or the um, person that you think is well is well off or you know or is doing better or is richer or is more successful whatever we always see that person as the oppressor as the bad person as the evil person and then we see whoever is you know not so well off or is poorer or is you know the employee we usually see the person as the person is the victim oh angel oh she's so perfect such a good girl such a this one she's such a victim right that's the way we perceive things most times and i'm here to tell you guys that <laughs> you need to wake up and smell the coffee okay that is not how life works okay if you your if you yourself you can't imagine yourself doing some things to another person's child or doing some things to your house help or whatever you want to call them, okay? House help or pair, nanny, this one, that one, whatever you want to call them. If you yourself cannot imagine yourself doing some bad things to them, why do you assume that every other person is doing bad things to their house helps? Why is that your mindset? Why is that your go-to comment? Whenever anybody comes out and says, oh, I had to let this person go, good riddance. I'm referring to Chinyere right now, Chinyere Abang. When she said good riddance in her, she put it as a title in her video. So I was just like, you know, the comment section was full of nonsense. And I'm just like, do you people actually understand that house helps can be very, very wicked and mean? Anyway, let's not even get there yet. Let me just tell you guys some things that I feel like will help put things in perspective, okay? Now, number one, if you're somebody who is, you know, employing somebody as your house help, you're bringing someone as a living nanny or whatever you want to call them, one thing you need to realize is that these people are not your children, okay? And I'm not even saying it in a bad way or in a derogatory way or in a, you know, feeling better way. No. The main fact, the, the fact of the matter, the actual fact of the matter is that this person is not your child. So there are so many expectations that we have of them that once you put it in, in your head that this person is not my child, you will sleep better at night, okay? You will, you, your mind will be freer once you realize that, okay, this person, no matter how well I want to treat this person, no matter what I want to do to this person, no matter how I want to, you know, treat this person or make this person feel, they are fundamentally in reality, not my child or not my children. So there's some things that will happen that would shock you sometimes. But you have to remember, this person is not your child. They have a different nature and most times nurture that is working for them. That is different from what you can offer. So they are not your child biologically, number one. And then number two... You did not raise them, especially for those of them who came as adults to your house. There are people who have a different arrangement where they come as children. I don't really like that arrangement. I never liked it. I, you know, I don't know. I don't. I never liked it. I don't. I don't have an extra child in that sense. Okay, so I never liked it. But there are people who have that arrangement because these girls are just or these children are usually in the village from poor backgrounds. They don't have food to eat. Their fathers and their mothers are trying hard to raise them. You know, are basically suffering. So they basically just try to send them to people's houses to go and work for them in quotes and you know any living but when they come as young children i don't consider it as them working for you i see it as you adopting a child or fostering a child so the dynamics is supposed to be different if you are treating a child as an adult and you are giving them labor as an adult then you have a problem okay so when they come to your house at a very young age when they are minors you should treat them as minors you should treat them as your words as your you know basically your foster children okay but the older ones especially they come from backgrounds that this person has lived 18 years 19 years 20 years in the village you know from house to house in so many cases you know or some of them on the streets there are so many things that and so many mindset that they already have that you cannot change in one or two years that they come and live with you or even a few months that they come and live with you you can't change it okay it doesn't matter how well you want to teach them it doesn't matter what you tell them 
you can't change it by the way i have a video on how you can you know manage your helps how to recruit your helps questions to ask them and stuff like that how to treat your helps i have that video somewhere on my channel i think i made that video like last year or two years ago so i'm going to link it down below i'll find it and link it so you guys can go and watch it right so if you're looking to recruit new helps just go and watch that video and then you know it will guide you it's just a guide it's not like you know anyway yeah so when they come to your house and you're trying to teach them trust me see eh in my own case, I'm lucky that I've not really had so many helps because God God knows that I don't want my house or I've never liked my the idea of my house being like a train station. Somebody is coming and another person is going. The person is staying one month, another person is staying two weeks, another person is staying six months, another person is staying... Eh, eh. No, 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 no. I've never liked the idea of that. So God has helped me in that aspect. So I've not really had so many helps, but even the ones I've had... You know, the I've, most of my help stayed longer than one year at least, and the last two that I had stayed five years and three years, right? So, is it five years and four years or five years and anyway, three or four years and three years, whatever? Anyway, they stayed long enough and we parted on good in good terms, right? However, just because some of us don't come out here to come and tell you some of the things that we have we have been going through or some of the things that we've been seeing with our eyes. Just because you don't come here to come and, you know, air people's dirty laundry out does not mean that you should now automatically assume that they are good people or they are... I'm not referring to my own people, Sha, but I'm just saying, don't automatically assume that because we don't come out here and... Not even that they are, that they are not good people, that they are perfect, right? So don't assume that they are perfect. Don't assume that our relationship is so sweet, there's no hiccups, there's no nothing. <laughs> Trust me, there are some stories that if I come and tell here, eh... You people will start seeing some people in a different light. Like, you people will be shocked to your bone marrow, right? Some of the things that I have taken, I have tolerated, I have endured. If I tell you guys the story, someone like my mom will always tell me that it can never be her. It can never be her <laughs> because when she sees me doing something, she'll just be like, ah, these girls are so lucky that it's you. Because if it's me, eh, the few times my mom has come to my house, eh, I can tell that oh, she's like, oh, what is happening in this place? <laughs> what madness is happening in this house, right? But that's it. That's because I chose to swallow some things because I was being very sympathetic to them because I understand human nature. I understand fundamentally that these people are not my children. I didn't give birth to them. I didn't raise them to you. They came to my house. So there are so many things I had to just swallow and tolerate from them because I knew that they did not know better. And it's not just by staying with me one or two years or three years I will even make them change. They will have to have stayed with you for so many years and they would have to not just even stay with you. They would have to want to change by themselves. For them to be able to change so i swallowed a lot though i swallowed a lot and i'm still swallowing a lot even though i'm not in nigeria i'm still swallowing a lot i'm just holding myself from not talking right anyway so don't assume that just because somebody parted ways with their house help then it's because the person the madam is bad so that's why the girl left because the madam is bad it's not true i keep telling you guys that in a lot of cases where they have actually where they actually have bad madams or bad employers these girls don't leave I'm telling you people this thing, people will not believe. Where they are actually being maltreated, they don't live because they don't understand that. They feel like the world, the world might be worse off, okay? That's what I've come to understand. Many of them feel when they are being treated badly in a place, when I say badly, I mean badly, treated like outsiders, you know, treated like, you know, commoners, like dirty people or whatever. When they are in such situations, they feel like the world will be worse, so they will, they will stay, they will manage it, they will suck it up, they will endure. But when they go to a place where you treat them with so much freedom and so much love and you welcome them into your home and you treat them like your own, they feel like they can get it better. They feel like I beg, you know, like they just, I don't know, I feel like that setting does not work well with them. They just feel like, oh, like, like I can get it, like it can be better outside, okay? That's what I think happens. It might not be completely true for many of them. But that's what I think happens, okay? Number two, you guys have to realize that for a lot of these people, they want to be free to do whatever they want. It is just human nature. Even you, when you were living with your parents, you wanted to be free to do whatever you want. That's why many of us quickly ran and went to school for after school. <laughs> after school, many of us got married, okay? I've heard girls who said they got married just because they were trying to escape home, okay? That's not my story by any means, but I understand that feeling of wanting to be free and do your own thing, okay? And I don't hold it against anybody to be to want to be free. And I don't, in fact, if I talk to most of my friends or most people that have sense that I've talked to, they don't have any problem with you wanting to be free. What they have a problem with is you staying in their house, giving them attitude, you know, 
being paid, not doing your job well, and then sneaking around and then trying to get your freedom in sneaky ways. That is what many of us have a problem with. I keep telling anybody, I've, I said this in that video, right? If you come to my house, one of the first things I tell you is that any day you want to leave, even if it's tomorrow, even if it's this night, even if it's after this talk now that you want to leave, just let me know. Okay, just come to me and say, please, I don't want to stay in your house anymore. Or please, I have other things I want to do. Or I want to leave. Just let me know. I will let you go. I don't have any attachment to you, different from, you know, normal relation. Like, I don't... I, like, I don't have any special attachment to you. If you if you tell me today that you want to go, I will wish you well. I'll be happy for you if you're going on to do, you know, something better. If you're not going on to do something better, and I'll get to that, that's your business. But, you know, okay, you want to leave, that's fine. I'll pay you your salary. I'll give you extra money and, you know, set you on your way. Okay, just be going because God forbid that I actually convince somebody to stay in my house or I beg somebody to stay in my house. God forbid because do you know who I am? Like, oh, come on, get out. <laughs> you know, but besides that, like, why do you want to force somebody against their will to be in your house? It doesn't make sense. Even if you spend too much money on them, this and that, this and that, just cut your, your cost, Abby. Just count your cost and let it go. Okay, let them go. That has always been my issue and the issue of most of the women I know their issue is just, if you want to go, just say you want to go. Pack your things, carry yourself, and go in peace, quietly. If you call me tomorrow, we can still talk on the phone and be normal. Like, we will not have any beef or anything. So, but why do you have to be sneaky? I realize that sometimes, why they want to be sneaky, why they start doing all those things, is because they want to eat their cake and have it. They want to still earn salary. They want to still be treated right. They want you to still treat them well, because they know they are being treated well. They want to still treat them well. But they want to be outside. They want to do whatever they want to do, right? And then, some of them, when they leave and they're living with attitude and stuff like that, is because they are not happy with themselves. That's just the truth. They are not happy with themselves. They are seeing you as the person that is holding them back, right? Even if you're not holding them back, oh, they are seeing you as a symbol of something that is holding them back. And they now want to revolt. They feel like revolting is a way of... I don't know how to explain this thing. If, if, if you guys, you know, understand it, let me know, right? They're seeing you as a symbol. It's not because you maltreated them. I keep saying it. It's not because you maltreated them. Because what many of them are going back to in the villages and stuff like that is worse than what they had in your house. In fact, they had it worse in their father's house, houses or in their parents' houses before they came to live with you. So they know the difference, but they just feel like, Many of them just feel like, no, I'd rather be at home. I'd rather be in the village walking up and down. Because mind you, here, and I want to point out is, People always say, oh, they want to be with their family. It's a lie. In a lot of cases, they don't want to be with their family. In a lot of cases, they want to leave your house and go to another person's house, a man's house or somebody's house or just be on their own. They're not trying to go back home. That is why you have to be careful if anybody wants to leave your house. You have to make sure you contact their families and, you know, make sure that they, the families know that they're coming back to them. Look for a trusted person and send them back home. They should run away from their father's house. They should not run away from your own house, okay? Just so they don't put anybody in trouble. So, in, so there are so many assumptions. I'm not saying that there are not people who maltreat their house help, so don't get me wrong. That one self day. I've talked about it before. Many women are wicked, okay? A lot of women are wicked. A lot of women are actually transferring the aggression of their husbands to their children and to their house helps, right? A lot of people are, are deprived of so much power in their relationships. They feel like they are less than in their relationships. So the only place they can exert that power is on their house helps, right? So I've said that before. So I'm not saying that house helps being maltreated does not exist, but I'm saying that it's not in all cases that you hear that a house help left somebody's house and then you jump to the conclusion that the person is a bad person, especially when they have not given you any reason to think so. You went to school, you did everything, and then when it's time for you to go, you decide to go with Agidi, go with anger. So you guys should stop making such comments and making it look as if, oh, this person is a wicked person. If it's your own child, don't call. If it's my own child, do you know what I do to my own children? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Do you, know do, my, do you know what I'll do to my own child if my child tries rubbish? <laughs> I'm not even talking about physical beating, right? The punishment I will give you, the reprimanding I will give you, the things I will do to you for... for uh, um, not doing the right thing. It's different from what I'll do to another person's child because it's another person's child. I don't want anybody to say that I'm maltreating them. Oh. So many of these house helps in their houses, if they try half of what they do in your house, their parents will go and pluck a, a bamboo and beat the hell out of them. Their parents will, will 
put pepper in their bum bum. The, the same thing they come to your house and they do, and you even ignore something. Self, I don't even, I don't even talk. Like I'll just come and see the rubbish. I'm like, whatever. Like I can't keep myself because I have people living in my house, right? And I move on. Let them go and try it in their parents' house. The kind of wastefulness they do because I want that one is certain. I don't think I've seen any house help that wasn't wasteful in Nigeria. I don't think I've ever seen any house help that wasn't wasteful. Like they are wasteful in one way or the other. Is either they are over consuming being wasteful by over consuming that thing or they are being wasteful by just leaving it anyhow not taking care of that thing okay or they are being wasteful by giving somebody outside that you don't know about but in one way or the other they are usually very wasteful if you have one that is not wasteful hold that one with your hand leg in <laughs> fact those are the ones you should be sentimentally attached to right they are usually very wasteful and it usually boggles my mind i usually say this person that is coming from nothing this person that really did not have anything before how is it that you now see things in abundance and you are now being wasteful? It always boggles my mind, but that's just the thing. That's just the truth because it is not their own. They do not pay for it with their money. They don't know the value of some of those things. So they'll become very wasteful. And that reminds me, another thing I, I want to go into is those people that say, Oh, do you know how much uh, you pay for help abroad? Do you know how much you pay for help abroad? First of all, do you know how much you get paid abroad for anything compared to Nigeria? Why are people japping till today? Why are people leaving Nigeria and coming abroad? It's because of how much they are paid for doing the same job they will do in Nigeria. Granted, the job, the money they pay you now abroad, you will spend most of it abroad though. Compared to how much they spend in Nigeria. At least in Nigeria, if you are paying them their monthly salary, in, in many cases, the cases that me I know, you pay them their monthly salary, you still take care of them every month and still buy them extra stuff and still dash them money from time to time. And a lot of that money, that bulk money that they get is for them to eat alone. Come and try it abroad now. Yes, they will pay you big amount too, but remove your rent first of all, remove your utilities, remove all your bills. You see that you don't really have much left, okay? So let's stop comparing apples to oranges. It does not compare. Some me saying, oh, do you know how much? And abroad, even when you have help abroad, many of them are not living helps, right? And even the living helps, you know, there are so many things that you're not, they're not um, um, entitled to, okay? Even though they are living helps, right? But let's just compare in general. In general, abroad are not living helps and they have so many bills to take care of on their own. That's number one. Now, number two, there are so many things that house helps do in Nigeria that if they try it abroad, they will land in jail. But they would they will do it in your house. The highest thing you will talk, finish and send the person home. Try it abroad and you will see yourself in jail or you will pay fine of some sort, right? A huge fine of some sort. So let's stop comparing all these things and say, abroad, this, abroad, that. It's like, I get it. Some of them are being underpaid in Nigeria. And anytime I hear people being underpaid in Nigeria, I'm like, you're very wicked. Because at the end of the day, one thing that me and my husband always say is that you can't actually, you, you, you can't actually quantify how much these people help you and pay for it. Like you can't really, I don't know how to explain it. Like, that a monthly salary for me is enough, oh, but it is not enough for the job that they do because these people are taking care of your children and some of them do it with, genuinely with their hearts, right? So if you have somebody that is in your house taking care of your children, helping you to, to, to you know, hold down the home front while you do other things, they need to be compensated very well. And one way my husband and I compensate them is by making sure that we help them achieve something in their life, okay? So it's more than just the money. The money, yes, but it's more than just the money. You have to help them achieve something in their life because they're helping you achieve, you know, the, the things you want to achieve for yourself, okay? Yeah, but yeah, back to my point. It does not compare. How many of them are trained in Nigeria? How many of them even have a degree? How many of them even, even went to secondary school? So they don't talk of having a degree. How many of them can even perform CPR? But here, before you do that kind of job, do you know how many certifications you can do just to be able to take care of children? That's if you are going the legal route, that is very expensive, right? You're going the normal route of getting an au pair, that's very expensive. There's so many things that they need to learn before they'll be able to come and stay in your house and take care of children. How many of them are, you you said do you even know CPR? I don't talk of your house help. <laughs> Have you finished the CPR? So let's stop comparing that. Oh, do you know how much they are paid abroad? That's because it's abroad. That's because it's abroad. Like, you cannot... Do you know how much doctors are paid abroad? Yeah, you're comparing to Nigeria. Do you know how much even cleaners are paid abroad? I compare it to Nigeria. Also, our Nigerian house help arrangement is not really the same thing as au pair or, you know, helps abroad. And that's because there are some jobs or some job descriptions or some you know things people do in nigeria that you can't really find abroad for instance you can't really find 
a shoemaker abroad okay like i mean like uh, what they call them dodo eh uh-huh. you can't really see dodo abroad you don't really see these people that carry scraps on the road abroad you don't really see people that fetch water in gallons abroad so there are some job descriptions or some things people do to make money in nigeria that they don't do abroad so it doesn't really make sense to compare these things it's like saying ah do you know how much a shoemaker is being paid in nigeria to make shoes or to fix shoes how come in how come abroad they pay them more but in nigeria you pay 200 naira to sew your shoe i don't know how to explain it but it's not the same thing that job description that we have in nigeria as house help is not exactly the kind of job description we have abroad in nigeria it is more i don't know it's more like a it it's it's different okay <laughs> that's all i can say this is future adesi editing the video let's get back to the video and another thing that even makes me laugh is when people say things like oh because the work is too much which work is too much the other day i was telling somebody that which work is too much first of all you are in my own let me use my house for example sure because some houses they actually overwork their helps right but let me use my house for example in my own house i had two helps right i had a cleaner that I used to clean every day except on Sundays so I had two helps I had a cleaner and I had a gates man who used to take care of everything outside the house the dustbin the cleaning of the compound the cleaning of the washing of the cars the doing of every all these all these menial jobs around the house or you know clean here dig here do this one clear that thing I had a gates man that was doing all of that okay so tell me what is that work in my house that somebody is doing that they would not have ordinarily done in their own parents house if not more and mind you I'm hands-on, my husband is hands-on. It's not like we're just both sitting down here and saying, cook all the food, uh, go to the market, uh, make money or whatever. <laughs> make money. Or wash all the clothes or, you know, stuff like that. In my house, I'm very hands-on. My husband was managing the laundry most of the time. He will do all the laundry. Highest thing he would tell them to do is to go and spread the clothes, right? But he was doing the laundry most of the time. What else? So, what is that work that they are doing in my house that is so terrible that you say, hey, Nigerian women are suffering this girl, so... A lot of this work that they're doing in your house are regular works that we did in our own parents' houses. If not, we did it even worse in our own parents' houses. Did I have washing machine growing up? At least here, yeah, you have washing machine. Did we have washing machine growing up? In my, growing up, yes, we had gas cooker, but we also had kerosene stove then. And you would be on. Here, how many of them are even. In fact, my gas cooker here was electric, just PM, the thing would come on. Right? So. Let's let's stop making it look as if Nigerian women are these evil women. The evil ones exist, and when you find them, talk about them. But don't see any regular Nigerian woman that has a house help as the devil. She's not. Many of them, even in our generation, especially, many of us don't even have time. Like I remember in Chinyere's video, Chinyere was saying that do you know it takes a lot of effort for you not to treat them the way you treat your children, and that's just the truth. I can't imagine buying something and being like, no, make sure you don't touch. I'll be checking. Make sure you don't see. In my house, and anybody can confirm, I don't care how many meats you take. Oh, I mean, of course, you will not go and take more meat than is necessary because, and and I didn't even have to spell it out to them. Many of them just instinctively, if you have sense, you will know, right? If there's ten meats in the pot, you won't go and take five now and, and leave five. No, now you, <laughs> if it's two, you take, you take two, but you won't, you you take with your sense, right? I was never serving food for them. I was never dishing food for them. In fact. There are times that I'll cook food and I'll be like, you know what, just serve me. Just because when you finish cooking food, you know sometimes now when you finish cooking, the smell has entered your nose and everything, you're not really that hungry. So I won't serve myself immediately. Later on, I'll be like, okay, serve me food, right? They'll serve me food, they'll serve my husband food, they serve themselves, they, I don't I don't check. I don't even care if you eat or not. I don't care what you eat. Like, sometimes I'll cook food, they won't eat the food, they'll go and eat cereal or whatever. I remember my mom saying that thing one day, my mom wanted to... <laughs> My mom could not could not understand it. Like there's food, you know, it's food. You can't carry complex and be drinking in the evening. Eh? Wow. My mom could not understand it, right? And it's not because my mom is being wicked or anything, but it's just that structure, like that discipline. Like you, you guys know how the older generation are now. Like they are very disciplined. They are very structured. And it's not like I'm indisciplined in my house, right? But there's some things that see, I just couldn't be bothered at all. I just couldn't be bothered. There are other things I was even more disciplined than my mom in. Like, you know, making sure that you have your bath every morning. Like, you wake up, have your bath, and, you know, look presentable before you come out of that, out of that your room, okay? <laughs> I don't think my parents really cared about that one grain up. But for me, I really cared about it, though. Don't come out of your house. Don't come out of your room with your raga raga nightwear and your breast without bra. And be walking up and down in my house and be telling me, you know, you, you are doing morning work. Hey, hey, don't do that. And it's not even because of, oh, because of my husband or because of anything. Hey, hey, it just didn't look good to me. So, I didn't tolerate that, right? But in so many things that my parents would not even fathom, I was 
just being very lax with it because I just couldn't be bothered, right? So this is how I know many people in this day and age behave with their health. The main people said that with their health, they are all dressing, matching, they are, they are wearing matching clothes, they are going out to parties. In fact, they will go, there are so many people that have helps today that you don't even know that those girls are their house helps. They look like their sisters, they look like their younger sisters. Uh -uh. I've seen so many helps that are wearing crop top, even my own helps, what am I talking about, Sha? But I've seen so many helps that, you know, they're wearing crop tops, they're wearing, you know, combat jeans with their wig. Uh -uh. Then I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually, in fact, both of them, they would go and braid their hair. But, I mean, they pay for the braiding hair, I mean, they pay for everything, like attachment and stuff, right? I'll tell them, okay, go and make your hair and just tell me how much, right? They will go and make their hair, come back in the evening with braid that's from here to below their bum bum, right? And I'll be like, eh, hey, fine girl, I'll just hype them, hype them. And that's it, right? Growing up in, in many people's houses, you, you feel triumph. But many houses are not on local locals growing up. But in this day and age, how many households do you see on locals except the ones that are in secondary school, right? Which for me, I'm like, that's not house help, but okay. The ones that are in secondary school, many of them are in locals because of the secondary school. But the ones who have in secondary school or are not in school, you can't tell a difference. It's not like when we are growing up. So I'm just saying all this to let you guys know that you should stop using your mindset from how helps used to be, be fair in your judgment, be fair in your judgment, be sensible, not just being fair, be sensible in your judgment. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even funny actually I, I i mean it be sensible in your judgment i remember somebody coming to tell me in my comment section that me and my husband are so wicked that why didn't we carry at least one of our helps to travel i told the person you that you cannot even i don't care who i don't even know who the person is i don't even, i don't even care actually like whoever you are whatever but the way you want to make up stories about me i'm going to make up stories about you too i told the person you cannot even give your sister 20k you cannot, you can't, like, you would rather die than give your, your blood sister 20k. It is now to take somebody and relocate with the person. Do you know how, how much it will cost? Do you know how tasking that is? Do you know the, the things you need to do to be able to relocate with somebody? Right? So don't come here and put on people things that you know that you cannot even do yourself. And let's not even get this twisted, okay? Let's not, get, let's not even get this twisted. The relationship between a house help and an employer is not as black and white as as a regular job okay that's just the fact of life it is not as black and white as a regular job there are so many things that apply in a house help madam relationship that does not apply in a regular workplace so you can't really compare the two okay now in this person's case this person is being integrated into your home because of the nature of their jobs right so the closest thing i can relate it to in a workplace is a personal assistant not just a secretary or, a, or an office assistant a personal assistant in a workplace their relationship is not as black and white as a regular team leader or a regular uh, departmental head or a regular you know ceo and employer or whatever right it's not the same when it comes to a personal assistant some lines are blurred, okay, in both ways, both how you treat your, your boss and how your boss treats you. Some lines are blurred because of how closely you guys are working together, because of how personal the, the, the work relationship is. You know, some lines are blurred. So if you hear that somebody fell out with their house help, don't be using the mindset of how Oga and office and, you know, boss relationship works. It's not the same thing. The house help and the madam, their relationship is almost too personal for you to just see it as cut and dry it's almost too personal so when you see a madame being hurt that their house help left don't see it as eh why is she hurt once the girl go to her own home once the girl do this one eh, eh, don't see it that way because the lines are blurred if you've not had a house help you won't really understand it right now that brings me to another point i saw this in bemi's video and um, bemi a she was talking about how you know she wanted more for her house help and it felt like that's the one that left um she calls her tisha's nanny okay yeah so tisha's nanny she wanted more for tisha's nanny i've got her name hey, i know her name i've got her name Sha. anyway hey anyway <laughs> yeah so she wanted more for tisha's nanny than it felt like she wanted more for tisha's nanny than tisha's nanny wanted for herself and i could relate to that feeling so much like it's almost like you feel like eh, you feel like breaking the person's head and putting 
putting or the person's heart and putting what he wants for them in their heart so that they would you know want the same things for themselves and that's because like i said that relationship is kind of broad you kind of now have like a personal investment in that person like you almost tie their success to you you almost tie their outcome to your person if you're in a workplace and you you misbehave and they sack you the next day, they, they replace you, right? But when you have somebody that has lived with you, especially for an extended period of time, they've taken care of your kids, your kids love them, you love them, you guys have, you know, formed like a, a tight bond, like a family bond. It's not easy to actually cut ties, though. That's just the fact. It's not easy to cut ties. So when they are progressing in life or not progressing in life, it affects you in a way that... It wouldn't have affected you if it, was, if it was just like a sales girl in a shop or something, right? Because they've lived with you, you want more for them. You want them to be successful. You want them to have nice things. You want them to be good. You want them to be comfortable. You want them to be happy. You want them to be safe, okay? You want them to be safe. You want you don't want to hear anything bad happen to them or, you know, they lost money or they lost something. You don't want to hear that. I mean, except you're a cold-hearted, terrible person. Even when you live on bad terms, so that's even the funny part. Even when the person left your house and whatever, when you remember the person, you don't, except you're a bad person anyway, because me personally, even those people that I let go of, when I remember them, I just hope they are good where they are, like I hope they are fine, I hope things are working out for them, I hope, you know, they have made progress and stuff like that, that's just my normal human nature, that's just my normal want and, you know, prayer for them, right, so it's actually pain you, when you realize that ah, what you want for them they don't want it for themselves you know the way you see them they don't see themselves that way you know you want them to go forwards they don't mind going backwards in fact they're happy going backwards temporarily okay temporarily because it always comes back to bite them in the ass but yeah temporarily they don't care going backward they don't care you know that's new freedom they want to explore they want to try nonsense they want to do nonsense <sighs> it's actually hurtful when you think about it but again what can you do remember what i said at the beginning these people are not your children even your children even the children where you born even the children where you raise where you instill all the everything on them at some point your children might want different things from in fact not even at some point in most in a lot of in a lot of cases not most cases but in a lot of cases what children want for themselves is different from what the parents want for them so the difference is that in some children's cases they because of their parents they go ahead and achieve their parents goals and dreams right and then after they finish achieving it for their parents they now go ahead and do what they want right but that's because it's your child but in a lot of cases even your own children that you gave birth to that you know you have raised for all these years they still wake up one morning and they misbehave and they do different things and they want different things it's just that because they are your children you can actually like fight it <laughs> you can fight it but if they're not your children what will you do like will you cry more than the bereaved if their mothers are not angry why who are you to be angry right so at the end of the day you just have to let them go and just be okay with it and move on and get somebody else or do the work yourself okay so those are the things i wanted to come and share with you guys because i anytime i see those comment sections i'm just like many of you don't know is it that you don't know or you're just being hypocritical yeah some of those things that we do for them many of you cannot do it for your for your cousins your nieces your nephews your own children your your sisters you cannot do it but once you see someone else that you feel is easy target for you you just go pa 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 hey wicked women hey nigerian women hey she wants her freedom she wants who is that who has ever stopped anybody from wanting your freedom if you want your freedom come and be going now Come and be going, but just go in on, on, on good terms. Don't steal from my house when you're leaving. Don't, you know, destroy things or, or or say bad things about me. Carry yourself and just exit the situation, okay? We don't have to always live on happy terms of, oh, I'm letting you go right now. I'm sending you forth. No, we don't have to always live on those terms, but it doesn't have to be bad terms either. It can just be mutually, okay, okay, no wahala, no wahala. Carry yourself, go. Me, if I carry myself, go find someone else, okay? It can just be that. But what you see in most cases is that they want to just spoil the relationship. It's almost as if <laughs> I told somebody that it's almost as if they feel like if they live on good terms, you go and drag them back. I don't understand. Like <laughs> I'm talking to employers now. Don't allow their parents or their guardians or whatever guilt strip you into taking them back. Don't do it. It's not worth it, okay? Don't do it. Growing up, I have seen this thing play out time and time again. Another thing that I even wanted to see ahead, just remembered, no matter what you do for these girls that you bring to your house as either house help or nanny or whatever you call them, right? No matter what you do for them, 
a lot in a lot of cases they are usually ungrateful when they first leave your house okay when they first leave your house they are usually ungrateful they are abs i'm not talking about my own experience so even though my own experience day right i'm talking about my own experience i'm talking about right from when i was a child i've seen this thing play out in so many cases not just even not just, not just even um house helps even relatives right when they leave your house, they are usually ungrateful. Many of them will go home and tell all kinds of stories about you. Even that one, that people are doing bestie, bestie, people are doing, oh, matching outfits. You guys are sisters. You guys are this. People are asking you, she's your younger sister. You know, you're sitting there in the parlor, you're watching TV. You guys are gisting and kicking and laughing together. You know, she's not doing her work, but you are making excuses for her. You're even employing another person to help her with her work. <laughs> The work which she's supposed to do, she's not doing it, so you employ another person because you like her so much, you know. I'm telling you that even that one, right, especially when they live on their own, they don't live like on a mutually, you know, good uh, um, notes, right? They just want to live or whatever, you know, a man is in the picture or they want their freedom or whatever, right? They are usually very ungraceful initially. They will say all sorts about you. They will twist all the stories they can twist. They will misrepresent you. They will even misrepresent themselves like aside the fact that they will genuinely lie on you many of them will even remember things differently okay they will remember things differently from you from the way you remember them just know this and know peace okay for me it has always been something that i have known and i know peace because of it so in my mind i'm like once you leave my house whatever you want to say Whatever you want to say that I did, eh? Anybody that knows me personally will know that it is a lie. That's number one. But number two, even if they don't know me personally, that one consign all of you there. Like, all of you together, carry yourself and put on one corner. I don't give a flying rat's business what you decide to go and say about me when you leave my house. Come and carry Kane and come and flog me now. Carry Kane and come and flog me. <laughs> If it pain you too much, carry can and come and flog me. And some of these people, what they hold up, what they hold against you is even in ways you are trying to be of help to them. Even all the things that you did with good intentions, even all those times that you call them and be giving them advice and be telling them what to do, telling them what not to do, reprimanding them for some of the bad things they've done or the you know um, wrong choices they've made, and you're trying to talk to them and you know trying to. Basically, impart knowledge on them. You see all those advice you are giving them. Hmm? The way they will twist that your advice and can't tell other people what you said. You'll be shocked. You'll be shocked to your to your bone marrow. But you know the beautiful thing about this, right? The truth always catches up. What did I say? The truth always catches up. It always comes to light. Now, with maturity on their own part, they will now remember the truth that truth that they were misrepresenting before that truth that was hidden before it will now that amnesia they had it will disappear they will now remember the truth and in most cases this remembrance happens when they have stayed long away from your house they are now either in their own homes they have their own kids they are now married or maybe they're just doing their own thing and they're just in their own places and they're now older and more mature they will now remember that okay actually you Actually, she wasn't bad to me. Oh. Actually, she had my best interest at heart. Oh. Actually, what she did for me, no other person in this world had done it for me. Oh. Actually, what she did for me, even my parents could not do it for me. Oh. They will now remember. But the truth is that in many cases, many of them cannot come back and tell you, oh, I'm sorry for what I said about you. In many cases, everybody just moves on and that's it, right? So, yeah, just know that and just make peace with it now. So that when it happens, you won't be shocked. <laughs> when you hear your gist outside, you will not be shocked. Are you shocked? Don't be shocked. I've told you right now. Because what you hear about yourself, you'll be amazed at how creative they can get. You, 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 it will shock you how creative they can get, right? But don't be shocked. Just know that it is part of life. So yeah, that's it about this topic. If we do a live stream again and, you know, want to talk more about it, then, you know, we can. But I think I've covered most of the things I wanted to add because, I mean, I've given so much information about this before, like in that previous video. And this topic has actually been covered in different on different channels, right? But I wanted to add my extra 10 cents. <laughs> I want to add my extra 10 cents. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.